Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video on the official MTG Arena channel. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green ramp deck featuring four copies of the Goose Mother from Wilds of Eldraine. This card is quite flexible, can always cast it for x equals zero just as a 2-2 flyer, but the more mana we have, the bigger the Goose Mother gets as it enters with x plus one plus one counters on it, and when it enters we also get to create half of x food tokens rounded up. So x equals one will still net us one food token at least, and the more mana the better. And then whenever the Goose Mother attacks, we can also sacrifice a food if we do draw a card. So the Goose Mother not only functions as a finisher, but also as a card draw engine, which is excellent. If the opponent removes the Goose Mother, we'll still have some food tokens left over for the next copy we play, or we can always sacrifice them to gain life, which is quite helpful against aggro. And then we also need some early acceleration to be off to a quick start, which is where the four copies of Azusa's Many Journeys comes in handy. This card can be a little bit weak in a deck with a low land count, which is why I made sure to include 28 lands total, so we often still have an extra land to play with the first chapter, then it also gains a bit of life and eventually transforms into a 3-3 creature, also helpful against aggro. And then a two copies of the Iron Crag, and we've got plenty of legendaries to go with it, so if we draw multiple copies we'll be able to transform one of them into the equipment, which can also help out in the grindier matchups. And then we can potentially cast a turn 3 4 drop, such as Invasion of Zendikar getting two basics, can also transform into the Awakened Skyclave, and we also have two copies of the Blossoming Tortoise, which is especially nice if we get it going early, as it can mill additional lands into our graveyard, which we can then return to the battlefield, also has excellent synergy with our fetch land, four copies of Broker's Hideout can either get a forest or an island in this deck while gaining one life, and then it's in our graveyard, so we can always get it back with Tortoise if we didn't mill any additional lands, and then the Tortoise also pumps up our creature lands, and we've got four copies of Restless Vinestalk, can turn into a 5-5 creature with Trample, and when it attacks can turn another creature creature into a base power and toughness 3-3 three, three, until end of turn, so it can even pump up our Goose Mother, which has base power and toughness 2-2, two, two, so it gets one extra damage in, which can be relevant, or can potentially shrink larger creatures from the opponent into a 3-3 three, three instead. And then a Tortoise not only pumps the Vine Stock, but also makes it cheaper to activate. Same goes with Argoth, another activated land in our mana base, which can mill additional cards into our graveyard, which can also synergize with our Tortoise and makes 2-2 two, two bear tokens. And we also have the other half of Argoth in the deck, to copies of Titania, which can gain additional life when lands are put into our graveyard, so a fetch land instead of gaining one life will now gain three life with Titania, so that's also quite nice, and it's also quite nice alongside Tortoise, since it can also easily put more lands in graveyard and gain more life with Titania, which can eventually transform into Titania Gaia Incarnate if we control Argoth, alongside having four or more lands into our graveyard, and then Gaia Incarnate can return all the lands from our graveyard to the battlefield, and also has an awesome activated ability growing our lands into creatures, and power toughness equal to the total number of lands we control, so that can easily end the game. And then a two copies of Nissa also has great synergy with our fetch land, since that will enable landfall twice, not only generating extra mana, but also letting us search for an elemental or for an elf. And we've got two copies of Nissa, two copies of Titania, which is an elemental, and then three copies of Titan of Industry that our Nissa can also find. And then we also have four copies of Topiary Stomper for more ramp, finding a land when it enters, and as soon as we have seven or more lands in play, we can start attacking and blocking with it as well. And a 4-4 Vigilance also lines up quite well in this format. And then we've got two copies of Slogurk, which also has a bit of synergy with all these self-mill effects, since whenever our land is put into our graveyard from anywhere, we can put a plus one plus one counter on Slogurk, and then we can remove three of them to return it to its owner's hand, so that can potentially save it from a sweeper. And whenever Slogurk leaves the battlefield, no matter if it got exiled or destroyed, or we bounced it back to our hand, we get to return up to three target land cards from our graveyard to our hand. So this also has excellent synergy throughout, especially with Argoth putting additional cards into our graveyard, can maybe get back a fetch land that we played early on if our opponent answers it right away, and then can also work quite well with our channel lands, which is why I have two copies of Boseju and two copies of Odawara Soaring City, which can also give us a little bit of interaction, and also gets a discount from all our legendary creatures, of which we have many. And then at 5 mana we've got a 1 Vorinclex, can be a nice 6-6 six, six Trample Reach getting 2 forests when it enters, and transforms into the Grand Evolution if we've got the mana for it. And then topping off our curve, 3 copies of Titan of Industry, quite well positioned in the current meta, as there's quite a few artifacts and enchantments worth blowing up, and the life gain can also help out against aggro. And then a 2 copies of the Whale, which we can first adventure for 2 mana, which also gives us some early interaction against aggro, and then later a 6-6 six, six with Flash and Ward 2, so it's got a bit of built-in protection. 
protection. And then a mana base has plenty of utility lands, as we mentioned, with a vine stock and Argoth, and then two of each of the channel lands. And then to make sure we have enough basics to find with our fetch land and with our invasion of Zendikar, even with Vorinclex, we need a couple forests. I don't have any of the other blue green dual lands, so plenty of basics to round out our mana base. So that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand could use an extra green source for Stomper, but otherwise looks keepable enough. Opponent blue-white, there's our green source. So we'll get a forest, turn two, many journeys. Turn three, Stomper. And then we've got to wail for interaction. Is this Sunset Revelry? Yep, to gain four, draw a card. And yeah, we'll stick to the plan. Now I can also play a tapped Argoth. And then we'll try Stomper before playing Goose Mother, even though I could play Goose Mother X equals two and then still have a backup in case your opponent's got a counter spell. Yeah, you know what? I think I prefer that. since Stomper wouldn't be active, even if it does resolve here. And now we've got a Goose Mother Earth that can start drawing opponent with a Union. So this is a pretty hardcore blue-white control deck, probably with Mind Splice Apparatus. So it's gonna be tricky. They're gonna have lots of sweepers, at some point cast a big White Sun's Twilight and present lethal. And we can expect plenty of sweepers, of course. So the lands with activated abilities will help, especially the creature land. So finding a vine stock would be nice. For now, attack, draw a card. And then, yeah, we'll give Tortoise a try. At least it will get back our fetch land right away. Or I could play Stomper, which gets a land as well, and maybe plays around a counter spell a bit better. Close call. I guess I'll go with the Stomper. And then if they pull the trigger on a Sweeper next turn, we'll still have Tortoise as a follow-up. And then I could get a many Journey started to eventually get a 3-3 creature out of it. The Whale has a 6-6 flash, also pretty decent. Opponent actually had the Wandering Emperor. And we'll probably just see them plus and then next turn cast a Sweeper. No, opponent's still exiling the Goose. So probably no Sweeper then. Emperor pluses. And another Stomper would also enable the first one. So that's an option. As opposed to playing Tortoise, opponent can syncopate for four, encounter it. Yeah, let's go with another Stomper, I think. That resolves. So now both Stompers are active. And what's the plan here? What is our opponent holding? Could be an Iganjo, could be like a smite or knockout blow to take out an attacking creature. If they had a backup Emperor, they probably would have made a Samurai. So... I guess we'll just send likeness at Emperor, Stomper goes face. Or I could send both at Emperor, but I don't think the Samurai are all that annoying, so... That works. And I'm just gonna pass a turn, not gonna play... Goose Mother for X equals 1. It's going to be a Memory Deluge, so they get to dig pretty deep. Potentially cast a Farewell next turn. Could also exile the Graveyard, but they probably want to keep the Deluge. So at least we'll still have a land for Tortoise to get back, even if we don't mill another one. But yeah, the other problem here is that while we do have something to keep making creatures, it's pretty slow. And our opponent can eventually pull ahead with our card draw. So, don't really see us winning this game. Unless we find something like a Vine Stalk. 
opponent waiting for Lankness to transform before pulling the trigger on a sweeper, perhaps. Most of their sweepers exile, so Titan of Industry doesn't really help with a shield counter. But we can now flash and wail end of turn, so that helps. So we can keep up the pressure without overextending. Bowen does have another Wandering Emperor. Anyone who harms my people must contend with and they will minus on Seeker. Okay. You are not much of a roadblock. Another union to gain life. Sadly, Argoth we can only use as a sorcery, so can't activate it end of turn here. So now if I were to flash in the whale, opponent can chump it, take 11 down to 9, and then next turn sweep. Yeah, that's not ideal since we wouldn't really have a great play to make during my turn necessarily. But I guess we could always tortoise, get back a land, and then set up a bigger goose mother on the following turn. Probably still have to go for it here. Possible they'll counter, but I doubt it. There's a small chance they haven't found a sweeper yet, I suppose, and yeah, opponent dissipates, so that points in that direction. So, that being the case, do we Titan, do we Goose Mother, or do we Tortoise? Tortoise would maybe unlock the ability to use Argoth more reliably, and I guess we can even use Argoth right away thanks to the discount from Tortoise. So that's quite nice. Now let's go with Tortoise. Could have attacked first. Get Argoth, number two, attack, and then activate Argoth once again. And we'll see if they have a sweeper or not. Did mill a vine stalk, so another tortoise would be nice, or if we get a chance to attack, but I'm not counting on it. Just gotta hope their hand is all counter spells. Jace to Milos, okay. That's fine. Weak minded will be educated in Phyrexian's ways. We can improve upon your ideas. And looks like they did not have a sweeper and our opponent explodes. Wow, did not expect to win this game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Start with Either Argoth or Hideout getting a forest. I guess there's a world where we can wait to play Hideout until after Titania or Slogurk and then get immediate value. But I think I should just play it now to have double green available. So we can play a Stomper maybe. Put on black green, so mid-range deck. So being on the ramp deck is not a bad place to be. Play Stomper, get Island is fine. And then we're already working our way up towards Titan of Industry. Having a fetch land in the graveyard to get back if Slogurg dies is also pretty nice. I see Abzan and Celesta, so this might be the sweeper heavy build with up the beanstalk. Okay, that's gonna make things tricky. So for now, Iron Crag plus Slogurk maybe over Titania. If they're gonna set up a sweeper next turn anyway, at least Slogurk gets something back. And then we have Argoth plus Titania, so getting to meld the two would be nice. I think we still want Iron Crag to make mana for now. Five mana, is it time for a sweeper? Just an up the beanstalk, alright, so that is setting up the opponent's card draw engine, so trying to blow that up with Titan is going to be our priority. And a commune with spirits finds a land. Okay, so we can play Titan, get the beanstalk dealt with, and then I'm not sure what other mode we want to choose. Shield counter versus... Making a 4-4. Can start by attacking, I suppose. Let's 
let's go with destroy artifact or enchantments and then I think shield counter over rhino that way if they do have a sunfall we don't grow with their incubator as much and then shield counter let's just put it on titan itself all right is it time for sweeper now sunfall yep so we do get our fetch line back which will now enable nissa for us and another titan so those are good in this matchup play nissa can even play titania as well And then now we're maybe at a point where we're okay transforming. And get a forest. And then we'll still be able to equip Everflame. And find a backup Titania. Thanks to Argoth, we've got a way to fill the graveyard. And uh, I'll equip Nissa for now. Okay, not a bad turn. Got a few options next turn. If another Up the Beanstalk shows up, we want to answer it with Titan. If not, we can just start milling with Argoth. Since we have enough pressure in play. March takes out Nissa. X equals 6. Find another Titan. Okay, so now what? Do we play Titan? Can maybe destroy the Celestus? Make a Rhino? And hit for three. And get to untap. Stomper the draw. Okay, so probably just going to activate Argoth now, get an attack in, maybe start there. Opponent could block Titania, I suppose, with the Restless Cottage. So maybe Titania doesn't attack, unless we want to equip with Everflame, which is also an option. Just don't want to overextend too much into another Sweeper is a problem. So yeah, let's send in Titan and the Rhino. And go for the throat kills Titan. Opponent takes four. So yeah, if we're feeling lucky, we could mill enough lands with Argoth to transform Titania. Or we can play a Stomper now to get back on the board and then still equip Titania. In which case, of course, we would have been able to attack past the Cottage. I think I should use Argoth as much as possible since this is a pretty grindy matchup. And we did mill Vinestalk times two. So we're pretty close to transforming Titania. Buseju blows up Argoth, so now we actually have four lands in Graveyard, but no longer Argoth to meld. Okay, so let's see here. Opponent does not have the ability to animate Cottage to block, since they don't have the green for it. So we can 7, 8, 9, maybe equip Everflame and play Stomper, wait on the Goose. I guess they can animate the Incubator, so yeah, we want to equip the 2-2. Two, two. Attack and play Stomper. So now we would love to find a Tortoise to uh, and get Argoth back. Or just draw another Argoth would do it. Put in falls to nine. And we'll play Stomper. And get another forest probably. Okay, let's see if our opponent can find another sweeper. Opponent passes, find our own Boseju, so that can blow up a cottage before they get a chance to block with it. So we can equip Titania and attack all out, since we have a backup Titania if they take it out. And wow, her opponent explodes. Yeah, I guess they're just too far behind here. 
and we've got plenty more threats in hand. Awesome. So we even get to rank up to Mythic. Sweet. And uh, yeah, did not expect to get there with blue-green ramp, but let's keep it going. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Many journeys into maybe a stomper into Goose Mother. Let's see what we're up against, the red aggro. Okay, so having the early many journeys and all the life gain here is nice. Next turn we can Invasion of Zendikar. As a play with fire goes upstairs. So yeah, as far as this matchup is concerned, we're off to the ideal start on the play as well, which makes a huge difference. Stomper versus Invasion is pretty interesting here, since we could play Stomper and then next turn play Invasion and threaten to transform it, since we would have seven lands total. If I draw land, we could also just go Invasion into Titan of Industry, and the failed case of playing Invasion as a Goose Mother, which is still pretty good here, so can't really go wrong, but I'll go for the more mana efficient play. And our opponent explodes, yeah, with that start, it's going to be pretty hard for Monorad to catch up onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Many journeys, hopefully turn 3 Tortoise would be awesome if we find another land. If not, it's going to be Stomper. Opponent green-white, could be poison. And we did find our land for Tortoise. Now we're not guaranteed to mill a land with the Tortoise, of course. But I'm still gonna give it a shot. Because then we might even have a chance to attack with the Tortoise to mill more. Alright, found a fetch land, perfect. So now we're guaranteed to have a land in the foreseeable future. And get our island. And we're off to a beautiful start. Can they answer Tortoise? Nope, Catilda, opponent on green-white enchantments, but they didn't have the most explosive start, it seems. So we'll attack, maybe play Hideout first, actually, and Stomper to thin out the deck, since I would rather mill, let's say, my uh, creature land here. So by thinning out some non-creature land lands, I think we slightly improve our odds. Still pretty marginal either way. Attack. Alright, and we mill Divine Stock, perfect. And then next turn, cast a huge Goose Mother probably. Bit of a mana discrepancy here. Redemption, okay. Can maybe get Calyx with Chapter 2. And uh, Goose Mother X equals 6 is an option here, but we can attack first. We'll see if they want to block the Tortoise or if they keep the Beast to search up a creature next turn. Okay, put on trades for Tortoise. So don't have to worry about the second chapter as much. And then double tap Q to float all our mana. But yeah, should be X equals 6. And having a backup Goose Mother is nice in case I answer the first one. So we still have plenty of food we can draw cards with. Fine stock also a bit of a combo with Goose Mother since base power and toughness is only a 2-2. Two -two, so we can grow it up to a 3-3. Three -three. And there's Calyx. At least we can block Catilda if they have an Audacity too here. But might be an Ossification instead. Or a Reign of Truth. Still doesn't get past the Goose Mother, I don't think. Maybe with a plus one counter, let's see, one, two, three, four, yeah, and nine, nine. So they could attack past Goose Mother. Which we'll take. So what's next for us? If I animate Vine Stalk, Pumping Goose Mother, that's going to be 9, plus 5, 14, plus 7, 21. So that would be 
attacking for lethal, forcing them to jump with Calyx. And then we can still reassess afterwards. Opponent takes it, so I think they're just dead now. Alright, that's one way to go. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems fine. Could use some two-man acceleration, of course, especially against red aggro. So we're gonna be pretty far behind. Yeah, I would be surprised if we're still alive by turn four. Take three. Pretty far from a Titan. Titania could maybe gain some life back, but don't have a fetch line to go with it currently. Kumano triggers Swiss Spear. And take four. Okay, so the upside of playing Titania is that it does at least survive a lightning strike. So they wouldn't be able to kill it end of turn, untap and keep attacking. But if our opponent has something like Monstrous Rage, they can easily attack past it anyway. But I think it's still the play. And then next turn I could go Iron Crank plus Slugurk, turn after Vorinclex. If I stomp her now, then our opponent has free reign to attack us. And then we might just die. At least Titania gives us a blocker. Stomper would set up Vorinclex, but I think that's just going to be too slow. One blocker, they can just go wide and burn us out. Opponent attacks all out anyway. So yeah, I'm expecting maybe a Monstrous Rage. Could also be a burn spell to finish off Titania. I think we should block Adversary since Swiss Spear they're more likely to save by enabling Prowess. And then if Titania trades for a burn spell here, that's okay. It's going to be Monstrous Rage plus another Monstrous Rage. So we should still trade here at least. Lightning Strike goes upstairs. And that's going to be putting us to zero since they trampled over with the uh, adversary as well. Yeah, not much we could do here, kind of as expected. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Could use a little bit more ramp for now. Get a forest, turn to Iron Crank, turn three, Titania. Vorinclex could be nice, giving us more forests to eventually play Titan. Opponent on, looks like Asper Control. Okay, I have to play Boseju, and then next turn we'll be ready to play Vorinclex. And good to get counter spells out of the way, since Vorinclex has a good ETB effect. And our fiends, so opponent is on Asper Legends. Perfect. And now we've got a large Reach creature to get in the way. Will not be transforming Iron Crag. Need it for mana. Let's see if they can clear Vorinclex. Just a Danik. Okay. So for now, Titania plus Argoth. And then next turn, play Titan. Titania also having reach helps. But gotta hang back for now. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, too many large reach creatures early on for Esper Legends. And uh, yeah, their removal just doesn't quite line up with what we're doing. Awesome. Alright, so we got to see our blue-green ramp deck in action. Seems like it's got some nice tools to fight other kind of mid-range and control strategies that rely on board wipes between our creature lands, Argoth making more tokens, and then having some uh, nice EDB effects like Titan of Industry to blow up key enchantments, 
can also help out. So yeah, overall, not a bad deck to play in the current meta. Still going to be soft to some of the more aggressive draws from Monorad Aggro, especially if you're on the draw. So that's not something we can easily fix by adding more interaction. Maybe adding some cheap blue bound spells can help but it's probably not really gonna make a huge difference. So for now, it's definitely a deck that's more designed to beat other mid-range and control strategies. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.